Hello everyone, today we're looking at the prehistoric mammal that is the Basilosaurus. And yes, I said prehistoric mammal because that's what the Basilosaurus was. It was a prehistoric mammal, it was an ancestor of uh, the modern day whale, I'm uh, pretty sure. And it's a really interesting figure for, that, uh, figure for that reason, well at least an interesting creature to have in figure or model form because... Basilosaurus does look like your typical prehistoric marine reptile, you know, it's long, it's slender, it's got these nasty teeth, it's big, it's, it's huge. Um, at least it was in real life, and it definitely is in model form here. Um, so you would expect it to be a marine reptile, but actually it's not. Um, now, Basilosaurus lived after the dinosaurs, so it's not uh, it's not like a mesozoic creature so it, uh, much like megalodon it lived after uh, the dinosaurs so yeah now this is an interesting representation of basilosaurus and i know that it, there aren't many basilosaurus models out there however this one is interesting because it, for one thing, it's the definitely the largest Basilosaurus model out there. Um, now, I would also say it's the best, but I also say the reason why it's the best is because there's not really a standard out there, a good a good, a good standard setter, you know. Because I like this model, I really do like it a lot, but it has some what I would say are major flaws. But I'll get to them uh, in a bit. But overall, I think this is an absolutely fantastic model, especially for the price. I did get it from Everything Dinosaur for about thirty six ninety nine, um, and I will link Everything Dinosaur in the description, like I did in my last video uh, for Paton the Megalodon. And this, uh, like all PNSO creatures, does have a name and it is Oba, Oba the Basilosaurus or Oba, I'm pretty sure it's Oba. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the Basilosaurus model itself. So uh, let's zoom in and look at the head sculpt. So if we take it off its stand, I'll get to the stand later on. But if we take a look at the, and like my last review also, I forgot to turn the light on. There we are. So Oba the Basilosaurus has an interesting head sculpt, actually. It looks a little... <laughs> it is weird, to say the least. It's, an, it's a weird-looking creature and a weird-looking model at that. So we've got some really, really detailed creasing of the um, skin here. And that's weird to see in a uh, marine animal, because usually they are very smooth and silky-looking. But this one, uh, as it is one of PNSO's older releases, uh, there's a lot of texture on it. And some would even say over-textured, especially, you know, on the body. Just look at it. I mean, it doesn't look particularly smooth for a marine creature. But uh, that's for all you model fanatics to decide. It does have an articulated jaw. It goes down about that far. So you can have it standing like that. You can have it standing like that. Or you can just have it flush shut. It doesn't, well, it doesn't, it doesn't close completely flush, but it comes pretty close to it. It's got a long slender head, and you've got some an interesting thing for the eye here. So the eye is just a black colour. It's very, very small, so you can barely notice it on the um, when it's on your shelf. But um, I wouldn't say that's partic a particularly bad thing. Um... But I know that on some people's Basilosaurus models from PNSO that the eye is just like a grey, um, which is weird. And it barely shows. You can barely see the eye on some of the uh, other models that people have. But luckily, when I got mine, it came with this black, so I can see it pretty clearly, even though the eye is pretty small. I mean, if I back it up a bit, you can still see that eye. So it is definitely no spoil, although it is very small. So just bear that in mind. The head is, as I said, very slender. You've got some really nice texturing and creasing on the uh, on the neck here and on top of the head. And going down the snout, you could see they've got some really nice fine texturing here. Going down to the eye, we've got some really nice texturing up here. We've got some 
skip folds and wrinkles there. And as you can see, coming down, it's a little bit smoother. But I think, I don't know what that is. I think it's a nasal passage or something. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not familiar with prehistoric whale anatomy or whale anatomy in general. So I'm not too sure about that one. On the, oh, knocking over the camera for a minute there. On the bottom, we have, again, some nice texturing on the neck and on the on the bottom of the jaw. You can see the outline of the jaw quite clearly there, although there is a bit of a seam because they articulate the jaw. When I open the mouth, you can see that there is not a lot of... It's nothing to write home about, I would say, because the jaw, as you can see, is just painted grey like the rest of the body, which is a bit disappointing. However... If we look at, if I just move this out of the way, if we look, if we can get inside the jaw here, you can see it's got some really nice pinkish paint here. It's really nice kind of whale, uh, whale teeth here. A lot of the marine uh, mammals or whales, I should say, actually, um, in this case, uh, their teeth, they were actually, you know, predatory whales. So like the killer whale in the modern day. So we had Leviathan and, and we had the Basilosaurus, although they lived in different times, of course. Now, the Basilosaurus does have some fearsome looking teeth, as you can see. And the mouth is kind of flexible. It's not as hard as the other, as the other parts of the body. Again, really nice. Some really nice pinkish paint there. And you can see it's got some really nice counter shading at the back of the mouth compared to the front. Because you can see it's got some pink and then you've got some white there. So I know I quite like that, to be honest. I don't think... It's, not, it's, it's nice when mouths aren't entirely... The inside of mouths aren't painted entirely in a... Uh, how do you say? An entirely pink colour. And then coming to the body the main body here which is very long so i have to go it's going to take a while to get through but we've got some really nice texturing on the body here some loads and loads loads of creases as i said it may appear to some to be a bit over textured but as you can see it's pretty much the same story all the way around on the bottom you have some nice texturing as well it's almost almost like uh, like crevices in its body, which is weird. I'm not really sure what to think about that. There's loads of lines and crevices and stuff. I'm not. It's almost like someone scratched it to death or something, which is very strange. So it's kind of the same story all the way along, except down here it kind of becomes a bit. Well, actually, it's pretty much the same, but there are a lot more. I would say it's a lot less, it's a bit like, it just appears less egregious, I think, because, probably because the paint is a little bit varied here, um, because you get, it's, you get, it, the uh, variable painting does distract you from the all those different lines in the model. As you can see, we've got some white, and then it fades into a lighter grey, and then into a darker grey, alternating along the upper part of the tail. And then the lower part of the tail is simply gray as you can see and then on the fin here got some really nice fine texturing i like this i really like that actually the fin looks really good i would say um it's pretty nice fine texturing we've got some darker grays here and it kind of fades into a lighter one at the when we get to the bottom of the tail there which is really nice and looking on the underside of the tail again we've got loads of those weird lines weird scratchy lines <laughs> um now Main flaw about this figure. Main flaw is, I would say, these egregious seams. They are absolutely ridiculous, I would say. And I really think they could have been avoided. I am not entirely sure why they weren't uh why they were why they weren't avoided and what PNSO was thinking when they decided to, you know, put this figure together and make it. Uh, it seems a bit puzzling to me, but, um, you know, with other figures like the the Viaton and the Megalodon and even the, um, Evan the Tylosaurus from PNSO, you can, you can, the, the seams aren't as noticeable, but with this one, it's absolutely awful. The seams are terrible in this one. It's the main 
flaw with this figure, I would say. The main flaw, although it looks amazing from a distance, this figure, and the the the, the pose of it is so good. It looks so lifelike, like it's really f like a like a massive sea serpent that's just um uh really making its way through the water in a, in a really how would I say sleek way. It's a really sleek looking figure. That's what I that's the word I was looking for. It just has these seams which just really. You're just looking at the flow of the figure, and it's just interrupted by these sections. You can clearly see there's one section here, second section here, goes down to here, and there's this third section here, and I think there's also a seam at the back of the tail as well. Um, if I can identify that. Yep, yeah, there it is, just here. As you can see, if I put it back on the stand there. But that being said, it is... We don't have much choice for Basilosaurus on the model, so uh, on the on the market, I should say. So this is your best choice if you want a Basilosaurus. Um, I think Collecte do have a Basilosaurus, although it although in terms of detail, in terms of quality, it's nowhere near as good as the PNSO one. As I said, my only gripe, and it's a big one with this model, is the seams, and you can clearly see them, even though the camera is um, quite a distance. From the model it is a distraction but hey ho it's how it's how it's gonna go unfortunately and i don't believe pnso have released an update for this model like they did with the megalodon to correct the seams which is yeah disappointing but again that's just how it's gonna be now the figure uh does come with a nice stand here so we've got a higher pole here and a lower one here and it kind of makes it so that you can um, see the Basilosaurus kind of the body swerving and t turning and you can see that it just puts it in a really nice pose rather than it just being like that which is a bit weird but with this it really accentuates that feeling of movement that the, f that the figure is sculpted to have um, so I do like the stand the stand is 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 a really really good idea behind the stand um, and it also, like the Megalodon, if you get the updated, I think, actually, I'm not sure, I think the original, I think when the Basilosaurus first came out, it did have a different uh, base. I'm not entirely sure. I think it did, I'm not sure. But, uh, I think the Megalodon did as well, I'm not entirely sure, again, but if you buy it from everything dinosaur, like I did, you'll probably get the or you will you will get the sandy stand here and again it is kind of covered in a glittery kind of texture as you can probably see it on the camera but maybe not it definitely lo looks like it's there in the, in person but on the camera i don't think it does it justice really but yeah so that is the pianoso basilosaurus a really amazing reptile, uh, reptile mammal. I have to keep reminding myself of that. It's a really amazing mammal, really amazing model, except for those seams, which are absolutely awful. Um, really naturalistic paint scheme. I really like that. And it, even though we've got some kind of uh, variations in the paint over here on the tail, it is still really nice looking. Um, they've managed to make the paint look interesting, even though it's very naturalistic um again it's got that some may say it's got over texturing i would say it's slightly over textured however it's not too much of a problem for me um it doesn't really bother me the main thing about this figure for me is the seams which is a, which is a big problem but again it's a really good figure for the money just like the pnso megalodon is i'll just get in fact the pnso megalodon to for a size comparison okay so here we are with the pnso megalodon as you can see it's actually quite a bit longer in fact much longer it's not really doesn't really do it justice actually because the tail's kind of going backwards but um yeah it's quite a bit longer than the pnso megalodon but the megalodon is definitely <laughs> bulkier and here it is with the pnso momentosaurus or momentosaurus 
can see here we go. Again, the Memenchisaurus is a similar length. The Basilosaurus is about 50 centimeters, I think, or 49 centimeters. I'm not sure about the Memenchisaurus, though. It's a similar length, though, because obviously it's a Memenchisaurus and they're very long dinosaurs. Let's have a random comparison here with the Safari Eutyrannus. And then let's choose the Papo Carnotaurus as well for a bit more of a size comparison. So that is the PNSO Basilosaurus. I hope you enjoyed this review. I love this model. I think it's definitely worth the money. You should definitely get it. Although just beware of those seams because it can be a bit of a problem. Um, PNSO should definitely update their Basilosaurus. It's been a long time since they've released it and I think they should get rid of the seams, update the texturing to make it a bit more fine and less over textured, a bit, a bit less egregious with the lines because there are so many lines in it. Um, and But the paint scheme is fine. So I would say this is a great model, definitely worth the money. The base is great, the model's great overall. And uh, yeah, it's 36 99 from Everything Dinosaur. In my last review, I said the Megalodon from Everything Dinosaur was $36.99, and what I meant was that it was $38.99. The Basilosaurus is actually £2 cheaper, which is great. So, it's definitely worth your money. It's got a massive, massive model here. It's 50, 50 centimeters long. Very nice and sleek. It's a great looking thing to have on your shelf. And I have it on my prehistoric marine fauna shelf. Which is and it's my main centerpiece because it's that big. It's it's a de it's definitely a showstopper. Let's put it that way. So that is a review and thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.